you very much. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Good evening. I'd like to call to order a regular meeting of the City Council of Satellite Beach, July 1, 2015, 7 p.m. Please join Councilman Osmer for a moment of silence in the pledge. Please stand for a moment of silence, please. And the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll move on to agenda item three, and this is a recognition by the Satellite High School Robotics Program to City Council. And to let everyone know, I think it's been about two years ago, we made an agreement with them. They needed a place, and I'm glad we really worked together with the school and the students and so forth so they could have a place to meet and to work on their projects. And I think what you're going to see tonight is some pretty interesting stuff, and I know they're going to tell us a little story about our little friend here. Is that R2-D2? Yeah, 3233. Cool. So, um, please. Yes, can you stand up in front of it? You can tell us, please. All right. So, um, the robot we have here is the robot we took to competition for this year's first robotics competition down in Fort Lauderdale. And um, first robotics is a international robotics competition where teams have a six-week span to build and design a robot for a specific challenge each year. And uh, this is my um, fourth year on the team. I'm a graduating senior from Satellite Beach High School. And the first two years, we operated out of our um, chief mentor's high school uh, room in the back in the lab. And that really limited what we could work with and what we could build and when we could build it. So um, the move to the facility here was a very big help for our team, and we were able to build better robots. This robot this year is one of the best we've ever built. It has 360-degree movement. And it, I'm proud to say I was bored at competition because I never had to fix anything on it. So the room here has been a big help. It's helped us expand from five or six kids to 20 kids this year. And it's been a big help. Like my co-captain was saying a minute ago, we have expanded a lot as a team. Um, we've also come to incorporate several other schools. We've um, incorporated Florida Air Academy, uh, and we've also incorporated uh, several homeschool students as well. We've grown not only in size, but also in the different things that we're able and capable of doing. We have two, two co-captains this year. We've had people um, thoroughly dedicated to programming, people thoroughly dedicated to actually building and um, people can come almost any time due to this facility, and it's really increased like when, like when and where we can work, and it's just it's been like a great help, and we like to thank you. Great, right, right. thank you very much. Um, well, <laughs> we would like to present this to you guys. Great, thank you very thank much. You. Great. <laughs> I am Sasha Jesse. Talking to the mic there. Right. I am. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, one of our biggest focuses has been the future, and right now that includes expansion. So, for example, please hold before me said that this past year we incorporated quite a few new students, and the coming year we have plans to include one more school with the possibility of an additional one. And in terms of expansion, we have, but we're also working on getting more money for the team. That's our lifeblood. We needed to build these nice fancy machines. <laughs> we have uh, sponsor sponsorship from entities like Lowe's, Robards School Foundation, a place called Vector Dragon, and uh, Harris. It's pretty nice. And we, we even managed to win a grant from NASA, which is going to be very helpful in the future. We, so we can afford, that. right now, for example, all of the computers that we use are from the team members. I don't think we have any fully functional computers yet that belong to the team itself. We want to work on that in the future. I know because I know 
I like the computer part of this whole thing. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so the future looks bright. Thankfully, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I'm Nick Tiarillo, and um, I'm going to kind of talk about the future as well. Um, we're actually uh, having a summer program for uh, the younger age level of robotics called Lego Robotics. And we've purchased kits and the uh, field tables, and we're going to hope to attract the elementary school kids and surrounding elementary schools and see if they like it and um, eventually maybe move further into the um, robotics field. So. Great. Anyway, John, thank you. Thank you very much. And we appreciate your partnership. We hope please continue using it and good luck in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With people and schools and so forth, we get a lot, of, a lot out of it, more than we can see here, but with the kids being able to have a place to do this and enjoy themselves doing it, I think it's, it, it's great. And thank you guys very, very much. Thank you. So if you have an iPhone or a smartphone, you want to know how it works, I'm sure they could probably be a lot better off helping you. Um, thank you. Moving on to agenda item number four, recognition of the, of the Satellite Beach Lions Club donation for the Cassia Boulevard benches. Alan? <laughs> Give it to him. <laughs> um, that was a great segue into what I'm, what I'm about to say. Uh, partnerships within the city of Satellite Beach have been ongoing since the inception of Satellite Beach. Volunteering and um, just uh, local organization participation has always been a part of Satellite Beach. And it doesn't matter whether it was 1960 or if it's today, we still you know, work well together with all of our local organizations. And um, one of our local organizations, the president actually gave me a call last, uh, actually last month sometime, and said, you know, Cassia looks really nice, but it needs benches. And we'd like to buy those benches for it. Well, then that's special. <laughs> so, Frank Armitage, would you call up, Frank? From the Satellite Beach Lions Club, volunteered to um, work with me to, to spec out uh, some benches, and we met, I met with Frank, uh, Lance Smith, uh, Jenny and Kurt Black, and we um, worked it out to where we had the right benches for the right area, and um, they generously donated, I think it was about $1,600 for the endeavor, and they look great. So if you're going up Cassia, and you see the benches, take a look at the little plaque on there. It says, uh, generously donated by Satellite Beach Lions Club. So I just want to thank you, and I want the, the, the council to, to know that you know, you guys are a very important part of Satellite Beach, and always have been, and um, what a great, generous gift that was to the city. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Smile. <laughs> I'd just like to say, you know, the Satellite Beach Lions Club has, to me, is a mainstay. In Satellite Beach. I don't think I can really remember when there wasn't a Satellite Beach Lions Club. I'm not sure how old, but I know it's been around a very long, long time. It's, it's an institution. The pancake breakfasts and so forth are you know, just mainstays in our community. And I want to thank you for being great partners with the city. You've helped us out tremendously over numbers and numbers of years, and we appreciate it very much. And if you haven't driven down, has to yet drive down and see the benches. They're really, really nice. And uh, thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. I'd just like to add, Mayor, that I've actually sat on one of those benches. <laughs> Probably the first week it was up, shoe was untied, gave me a place to stop, <laughs> sit down, tie my shoe. It was great. Uh, my, my wife walks that every morning um, and loves them out there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further questions? Jim, thank you very, very much. We appreciate it. Moving on to 
agenda item five, citizens' comments. Citizens' comments are directed to non-agenda items. Okay. So at this time, the floor is open for citizens' comments on non-agenda items. Good evening. Good evening. Dan Genovese, Park Avenue, Satellite Beach. Uh, so last week we had the meeting related to the uh, rehabilitation of Roosevelt Avenue. Uh, citizens from Jackson and Park were uh, invited to uh, look at the conceptual uh, drawings and uh, make comments and whatnot. So uh, as you know, I had uh, distributed flyers to my Park Avenue neighbors. Uh, asking them to join in and uh, contribute where they could. And we found out that realistically it was all about Roosevelt Avenue and uh, Park Avenue and Jackson Avenue residents uh, really were there more for an informational kind of uh, setting. So uh, uh, Brittany has, uh, you, Brittany has, has uh, you know. About Brittany. It's okay. I'm sorry. I'm only it's looking at your name so right there. Name. I apologize. Uh, well, so, just not to get me off track here, I, I feel really embarrassed now. You're fine. Um, well, Courtney had, uh, you know, sent out uh, a notification that uh, uh, I found out quite coincidentally that you didn't need to be a Facebook member to get to the Satellite Beach Facebook mm -hmm. page, which is great. So, uh, what we found, what did we find that night? That night, we had roughly about seven Park Avenue uh, uh, neighbors, and uh, I think uh, Courtney had told me that uh, two had emailed, and we had one posting on the Facebook. So that was, you know, roughly there was uh, 100 homes on Park Avenue, uh, and, you know, by city standards, that's, that's a pretty good turnout, right, uh, uh, for concerned citizens. Uh, so uh, I guess the, the, the point of this whole spiel is, um, we were told that uh, we were going to get a letter uh, ad addressing the future Park Avenue's uh, uh, status, and uh, I was just wondering if we were. It should be there today. It should be today. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was mail yesterday. Oh, okay, so it'll get there. Tomorrow. Okay, all right. Well, I didn't get it today, so uh, maybe some other residents did, but uh, that was just uh, the point of all of this. So. Yep, you're going to get a letter, and then if you want, um, if the Park Avenue residents want to schedule a meeting, we can do that too. Right, and and we'll we'll see about that down the road. Yeah, but but thanks very know. much. Okay. Thank you. The public comment portion is still open on non-agenda items. Here are none. Close the citizens' comments portion. Uh, city Council comments. Who would like to start? I don't have anything. Um, I attended the Roosevelt meeting. I thought it was a pretty good meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I think most of us were there. Yes, mm -hmm. we, were all there. Uh, we were all there. Just to clarify, we were all there. <laughs> and I also attended on the 25th. I went to Orlando with the mayor and uh, the city manager, and we attended a, a seminar on, on the new pension legislation um, affecting our police and fire departments. So that was a pretty informative <coughs> seminar. And the next day, the Florida League of Cities also had um, their policy committee meetings, and I sit on the Urban Administration Policy Committee. And um, with the new legislative session starting in January this year instead of March, these meetings normally started in September, but they're now meeting earlier, so that was the, the purpose of us going over there. So um, it was good meetings. Um, there were probably 300 people from different cities across the state that sit on these policy committees and look at different things that are legislative agendas um, for the municipalities in Florida for the next legislative session. That's all I have. Thank you. I also attended Florida League meeting in Orlando, and it was very informative on pension. There's been some changes in the pension plan, and you know, in a lot of cities, it's a major issue. It is an issue in our city that I believe is well under control. We heard the new regulations on it, and we're, we're, I think, we're very, very well. It didn't really affect us very much. Learned a lot about it, and we were a little bit ahead of the curve. And uh, so I think it'll work to everybody. It's not the city's favor, but everybody's favor, the employees for the police and fire. So learned a lot. It was good, and uh, we're okay there. Any other 
Anything else coming? Hearing none, city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the city of Indian Harbor Beach did have their um, city celebration this past weekend at Gleason Park. If you were able to attend, they called it the Shark in the Park <laughs> celebration, which is kind of funny. And um, has, has, has Satellite Beach uh, sent them any kind of a formal congratulations or something? Mm -hmm. I think something like Would that. Would you like to do that? Yeah. Sure, we can do that. Send them a shark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told them that we were um, we could have a softball tournament and they could be the sharks and we could be the manatees. <laughs> <laughs> um, but their their event was very nice. Um, so I was there with my family and we had a great time and um, and I know uh, Councilman yeah, Montanaro yeah, attended. Um, so they were happy to see us there and it was it was a nice event. Um, uh, we did attend again the, um, the League of Cities, and um, I think it would be good if we um, brought at the next meeting an overview of that legislation and how it would impact the city. And if that's something you all want to do, we can we can prepare that. Um, uh, as for informational items, we did hold a meeting on June 24th with the uh, residents. Um, between Jackson and Park Avenue to talk about Roosevelt Avenue's reconstruction. Uh, we did that because a lot of the people that are between Park Avenue and Jackson Avenue use Roosevelt, so you know that's a user group. And then also when that um, road is being reconstructed, people are going to pour out onto these adjacent streets, so um, to you know it's a detour. So we wanted to make sure those residents that were may, that may not have been on Park Avenue, I mean uh, Roosevelt, were still included in the meetings so they can understand what was going on. We have not received any requests for any changes to this plan, so I think we did a pretty good job in drafting the 40 percent. Um, when we get to 60 percent again, we'll send out the notice to, to talk to the residents and make sure that that's what they want before we move forward. Um, and again, we did, um, we had some comments from Park Avenue at that meeting. Um, I agree with uh, Mr. Genovese's uh, assessment that that many Park Avenue residents was a was unusual and that's a good turnout for Park Avenue so we um, did uh, draft a letter that went out yesterday to address some of their concerns and explain our reasoning behind um, not funding it this cycle and um, hopefully if um, if they want to meet which I think would be a good idea then we'll go ahead and schedule a meeting with the Park Avenue residents to talk about their particular roadway. Should we get a copy of that letter? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we did hold our first green committee. Um, it was on uh, Monday night, June 29th at 6. We are now going to hold the second meeting tomorrow night <laughs> at 7. Um, and our, uh, we have three interns that are working closely with um, us to, to come up with a nice presentation and combine a lot of the members' ideas into one, and we'll be presenting that to them tomorrow night. I wanted to include a thank you letter we received from United Way. Um, for our campaign pr participation and more specifically thanking our assistant finance director Christine Fain for managing the campaign, campaign for the city. She's done that two years in a row now and it's been um, a, a good project for us. Um, we have received a thank you letter regarding two of our officers for assisting a, a resident and um, this is a uh, um, kind of a regular thing now that we get a lot of thank you letters from our, our staff and I, I think now that we include them in our packets you can see how often we get we get these. I do have one action item for you tonight and this is regarding the school board. Uh, as you recall the school board um, had requested to the county commission to collapse our educational benefit uh, impact fee which we call the school impact fee. Um, we have four benefit districts right now, which means that the fees that are collected in that benefit district must be spent in that benefit district, and that's really to, um, to meet the rational nexus test of collecting a fee. When you're collecting an impact fee, you have to, the, the person paying the fee must experience the benefit of that fee. Um, so we create benefit districts to um, ensure that any developer that's paying for that fee um, is able to use the school capacity that that fee generates. The, the school board requested from the county commission to make one long benefit district of the county, and we question that uh, philosophy or, or concept based on legal <coughs> reasons, as well as uh, just the philosophy of, of, of taking all the capacity available in the county and putting into one area 
And they were doing this primarily to build a school out in West Melbourne. Um, there is no, no question that they need a school in West Melbourne. Um, but whether or not the um, fees from Merritt Island and Titusville and Cocoa and Rockledge should be sent down to spend on a new school in West Melbourne raised a lot of eyebrows. So the school benefit district committee, which I sit on, came up with a better idea of having two districts um, and then also increasing the fee, which is necessary. They haven't increased their fee um, for 10 years. And so it would increase the development fee um, from around uh, $4,500 uh, to $6,000 per, per single-family home. Now, this um, it would also change multifamily and uh, mobile homes, but at a different rate. Uh, most of our development here in this county are single-family homes, so that's primarily the, the large user. Um, so we were uh, hoping that we could support that idea um, and provide this letter to uh, the county commission um, prior to their workshop on impact fees uh, so they understand that uh, the city of Sally Beach supports the idea of um, creating two benefit districts and increasing the fee, which would assist the uh, school board in developing their school in West Melbourne that they need, as well as one in Vieira, which they, they also need, um, but without impacting the idea of growth management um, and then also accounting for the increased cost of constructing a school, which um, this would do. Thank you. Um, questions from council? I move to submit the letter uh, to the uh, county commission. Second. I have a motion by council and council and Susie Gott. Second by Councilman Brimer. Since it is an action item, I will open the floor for comments. So the floor is open at this time for comments on the action item. Hearing none, back to Council. Any further discussion? I'll say one thing real quick. If anybody's around Surfside today and thinks schools are getting smaller, I think they delivered two or three more portables to Surfside Elementary School today. So that's a definite trend than has been in the past when they were thinking school enrollments were down. So I, it was at least two. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many what the final was, but there was one yesterday as well. There was one too, yeah. So they brought a couple more there, which is showing that we're starting to get younger families and so forth moving in, and the school seemed to be obviously gaining in population there. So, um, Lenore? Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Primer? Yes. Councilman McGough? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes. Motion passes. Courtney, any further? Thank you very much. Um, moving on now to agenda item eight presentation by architect Dave Goodwin on mixed use. Welcome. Mayor Cotillo, council members, citizens of Satellite Beach. I'm David Godwin. I'm a registered architect in Florida. I'm also a certified Florida Main Street consultant. I'm a member of the Main, Melbourne Main Street Design Committee uh, since its inception. I'm also the past president of the Space Coast chapter of the American Institute of Architects, and I represent them now on the board of directors for the Florida Association of the American Institute of Architects. I'm also the vice chairman of the Melbourne Historic Review Board, and it's my pleasure to be here tonight. I was asked to sort of give you a brief presentation on uh, a little bit about the history of mixed use. Well, the term mixed use basically just refers to small businesses and residential apartments sharing the same area. And this was considered the norm in our country before the early 1900s when zoning separated land use according to functions, like houses were segregated from commerce, work, and school. This helped to contribute to the urban sprawl as we all know it, 
and the dependency on combustible engines to get around, which causes smog, as we know. So in the 1960s and 1970s, mixed use reemerged as a tool for urban revitalization. Mixed use development is currently in vogue with planners all around the country, making for compact, efficient land use, offering shorter commutes to work and shopping. The resulting increase in walking and decrease in short trips by automobile both benefits individual health and reduces traffic congestion and energy consumption for transportation. So new urbanism arose in the 1980s as a trend to revive the tra traditional neighborhood, a part of which includes the live work units as we grew up with or in early 1900s where, where we all came from. A part of which this also includes live work units in which families lived above the store, like a bookshop or a pharmacy or something back in the old days. While it may seem new, this was the historical pattern in cities everywhere. The Yogali Arts District is a local example of mixed use with live work units. In the Arts District, the units may be rented out separately or they can be combined. This arrangement requires a little more thought and consideration. We're considering stairwells, privacy, soundproofing, firewalls, and ventilation. There's, there's more thought that has to go into these structures. But the success of the Arts District is partially due to this concept of mixed use. Generally speaking, the historic concept of mixed use has come full circle, making our modern cities more walkable, vibrant, friendly, and interesting. I have tonight an example that I'd like to share with you uh, using a sample piece of property, uh, Dr. O'Brien's piece of property on, uh, there it is, we do have an easel. Uh, this is on Grant and South Patrick. It's just an example of, say, uh, four retail or commercial units on the first level. So people will have parking out front. They'll be able to go into the stores. And also the uh, upstairs, would be have, uh, it would be two, uh, the second floor would have 1,200 square foot units of residential use. And they would have uh, balconies in the front and also balconies in the back. They'd have a two-car garage. and for private parking of the residential, and then some additional parking spaces in the rear for shop owners or guests, things like that. So I think that uh, this gives us a good example of what can be done with a vacant piece of property uh, in the, that's in the commercial district so that we can mix use, we can live in our workspace, and perhaps have a smaller, more vibrant community. So, well, that's, that's sort of the concept that I wanted to share with you tonight. I won't drag this out, but if there's any questions that I can answer. Um, Dave, let me go to the council first. Any questions from Dave on this? I don't, I don't really have any questions. Actually, I saw some of this at the CPAB. Where they gave some good examples of that. Um, I would just comment that. First of all, we always talk about City Satellite Beach is about 95 cent, 95 percent built out. So obviously, we don't have an auto open lots to build any more houses to begin with. Um, the town I grew up in has exactly that. There is an uptown section. There is apartments above every store, and it's been that way since the 1800s, and still that way. Um, I've also noticed in some of my travels as going to San Francisco and places like that, that is becoming a lot of the norm. When you tend to meet a lot of people, they all live above those businesses, um, and many of them do that. They, you see the kids walking to school from there, and you see the people going into their, their business. So um, I think properly managed, I think it's a good thing. Um, I, again, um, I know there were some concerns that were brought up about you know, they want to make sure that donors don't let the places go and stuff like that. And I would say that from a commercial point of view, obviously, you don't want your business to get run down. So you don't want the upstairs apartments or condos, whatever, to run down because that would definitely affect your business. So that is kind of a, you know, you have to take care of each other 
on that for that to be successful. So I wouldn't see that happening. But I think properly managed, I, I like the idea. I think it's a good idea considering our situation where we're at. Any further questions from? I like Steve. Like Steve, I, I grew up in upstate New York, and the excuse was the norm. Um, you know, we, we've talked about this, and I think um, this came up years ago, Mark, when, when we were on council before. An excuse, yeah. but you know, at, the, at that point in time, the Department of Community Affairs, um, you know, really put a, a hamper on what municipalities could and couldn't do with mixed use and, and now that that scenario is, has changed, yeah. um, you know, this is a valuable tool that we can use in Satellite Beach because, you know, we've talked about the non-conforming lots that we have in the business district in our city. And, you know, to make those lots more viable, you know, we've got to start thinking outside the box and incorporating some of these tools and, you know, there are tools in our toolbox. And, you know, the more tools you have, the more apt you are to be successful in what you're doing with redevelopment. And, and I, I applaud you for, you know, um, bringing this to us. It's, it's not something that's new to us. Um, but I, I appreciate all the work you've done in the past and the different things that you've worked on to get us to where we are today. And it's not just Satellite Beach and it's not just Melbourne. This is a concept that's going on all over the state of Florida now. Yeah. And it's a great tool. Thank you. Any further comment? Okay. At this time, what I would like to... Mark, I'll, get it, I'll get it later. Go ahead. At this time, what I'd like to do is open it up for public comments on Dave's presentation if we have a particular question on mixed use that you would like to have answered. The floor is open. Please, My name is Bob Chitty, and um, I own the property at 1360 South Patrick, right next to the Ireland Clinic. And um, I just wanted to start with a little bit of um, what took you so long uh, to get here, and then uh, just give just a little bit of the history of where I've been with this. Um, back in um, 1999, I petitioned the council at that time for a mixed use uh, provision. There was none at the time. And um, anyway, they did at that time pass that provision, and it was unanimous, by the way. And I recognize a couple of faces from that original council. Um, but uh, that being said, um, I actually lived on the second floor of that building all the way up until 2012. And at that time, we had begun a renovation. And, um, and unbeknownst to me, up until that time, I discovered that I, would, I was an outlaw. And uh, the provision that was passed way back when was somehow swept away and swept to what its current state is uh, regarding um, conditional use permits. Um, so anyway, needless to say, we had a little bit of a dogfight over here with the building department, and I lost, uh, bottom line. Um, so that being said, um, I became painfully aware of the restrictive nature of the existing code. And, of course, John and Courtney, um, as, as we went round and round, they, they really did not have uh, the tools to work with, their hands were tied, and they couldn't do much for me. That was the bottom line. Um, so um, that being said, um, it um, my property, of course, is, is ideally suited for this. The way it's situated, it butts up into a residential neighborhood and um, uh, fits right in there. It dovetails right into the canal and, and so forth. Uh, but that being said, um, as I stand back and look at this now, um, I look at this as a fix uh, to what the problem uh, was that I had. And um, so, therefore, I'm here to support this and urge you to support this. And um, I think also just um, uh, from a community standpoint, it sends the right message uh, to property owners uh, and investors, which I think that's what you want, is people here that have money um, that are willing to invest in property and um, uh, a quiet seaside community that has a little bit of a Key West flavor or, you know, where people go around and shorts and T-shirts and 
um, a neighborly kind of thing. So um, I also looked at the uh, comprehensive plan and what some of the goals were uh, that have been stated there, and I, I think this fits squarely into that uh, by all means. So um, anyway, um, and that being said, I, I say again, what took you so long? To get here, and then let's pass this, and let's do business. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Comment portion still open. <coughs> How you doing? I'm Anthony Romero with Dale Sorensen Real Estate. I represent Dr. O'Brien on the property, and we were thinking about um, what we can do with a vacant land piece of property and get its highest and best use. So you know, we had to think outside the box. That's where we came up with this idea and, and brought you the conceptual design and what it would do is bring more tax revenue to Satellite Beach as well as keep the community invested in their own neighborhood and shopping in the boutique kind of style places and I think it'd be a great statement to open up Satellite Beach to the mixed use because you know having such a small section that's only allowed to do it we're really not getting what we need out of it so this is definitely going to help all around for Satellite and you know I thank you for looking at it. Thank you very much. Other comments still open. Hearing none, back to council. Any further questions? This is this is one of these projects that I know that Courtney and, and John have helped guide along with the property owners, uh, Claudia and Jeffrey O'Brien, have been involved in this city for a long, long time. Uh, they're the type of people that work an issue, work a problem, and try to work through this. And it's really nice to see how patiently and how smoothly this has moved along through the years to get to this point. Uh, so I, I'm just glad to see that it's come this far and that we've got an opportunity to do what we're, what we're looking at doing here, because it really is a, a good way to show how you can make it. It takes a while, but how you can make a change through a city, through a government, and get, and get to a really good point. So um, I, I, I applaud the project and thank Courtney and John for their work with this. Thank you. Yeah, I would just say that I think that uh, mixed use is a terrific idea. I, I spent part of my youth in um, Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia, and it's just all mixed use. And it, it really helps to build a really charming uh, neighborhood. And um, sometimes you can look back and in retrospect you wonder why your zoning laws were so rigid. Um, but uh, I, I think this is a, a good start. Yep. Thank you. Um, I, I think it's good, too. I mean, if you live back here in the early 60s, there was not a lot of building here. And it's much easier to design and zone things in Vieira than it is in Satellite Beach in 2015. Um, we were a city, I think, that was really built on residential. And I think the mixed use is a good way to factor in both. And I think it'll help spur growth on all our, our city and lots that are like this. And, mm -hmm. uh, and for it, I, th I think it's good. It's 2015. I think it's time we make things work for, for us now and in the foreseeable future. So um, any further comments? Dave, thank you very much. Appreciate you, your input very much. Thank you. Um, moving on to agenda item nine, discuss, discuss, excuse me, take action on ordinance number 1103. Jim. Ordinance number 1103, an ordinance of the city of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, deleting the town center mixed use district and allowing mixed use as an accessory use in the commercial zoning district, revising the future land use map and amending the future land use element of the 1990 a comprehensive plan is amended October 1, 2014, based on the city's updated data and analysis of the comprehensive plan, revising and updating existing goals, objectives, and policies in accordance with the mandate set forth in Chapter 163 Florida statutes, authorizing transmittal of these amendments to the East Central Florida Regional Planning Council, State Land Planning Agency, and other applicable agencies for review and comment as required by Florida statutes providing a conflicts clause and severability clause and providing an effective date. So first reading of ordinance number 1103. Move to you. adopt on first reading. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Gott, second by Councilman Brimer. 
Um, further discussion from council? I do have a question. It's in uh, Exhibit A. It's on page 1-7. Um, policy 1.9.2, and um, it talks about uh, the final land use designations may be considered receiving districts for transfer of development rights, and they list those districts as residential high density and or uh, they've uh, t uh, eliminated town center mixed use and included the word commercial. My question is, um, elsewhere we talk about for instance, on the cover member memo from Mr. LaRue, he talks about uh, commercial and services as being the name. Um, and so I'm wondering if if we meant just commercial here on 1-7 or if we meant commercial and services. Great catch. <coughs> yes, um, we, we will add services to that. Okay. <laughs> Further comment? Sir? At this time, I'd like to open up for public comment on this agenda item. Hearing none, back to council. Any further discussion from council? Hearing none, Lenore? Councilman Osborne? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Councilwoman Gott? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes, motion passes. Thank you, staff. Um, moving on to agenda item 10. Discuss, take action on ordinance number 1106. Jim? Ordinance number 1106, an ordinance of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, amending section 30-416A and B11, Commercial District, Satellite Beach City Code, to authorize residential use as an accessory, accessory use with conditions, repealing section 30-416 sub C sub 13, Satellite Beach City Code, which provided residential use as a conditional use and renumbering, amending section 30-416E4, Satellite Beach City Code regarding maximum building height, amending section 30-424 sub C, Satellite Beach City Code to provide for off-street parking regulations for mixed commercial residential development, providing severability, providing effective dates, first reading of ordinance number 1106. Motion to approve on first reading. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Brian, <laughs> second by Vice Mayor Montanero. At this time, any further council comments? No, no sir. At this time, open agenda item 10 for public comment. Hearing none, back to council. Any for, excuse me, I'm sorry. Any further comment? Hearing none, Lenore? Councilman God? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes. Motion passes. Staff, thank you very much for your hard work, Courtney. And, uh, and the boards. And the boards. The boards put a lot of effort Great. into this. Yes. Thank you, boards. Appreciate the work. Okay, moving on now to agenda item 11. Discuss, take action on interlocal agreement for community development block grant. Courtney? Thank you, Mayor. The... Um, the city is currently in a, in a local agreement with Brevard County, which um, basically uh, basically assigns the, our community development block grant possible projects to Brevard County to do. This doesn't really affect us in any way because we do not have any census tracts that meet the requirements of being able to apply for a community development block grant. Um, a community development block grant um, application is really for um, housing and infrastructure projects in areas with low to moderate income um, persons and you would be surprised at how low that moderate income <laughs> person's areas actually are. Um, so we don't qualify for these grants, um, but what this agreement w does for Brevard County is lend them our population so they can use the power of our population um, to apply for countywide grant assistance and then apply those funds in the county that they should really be going to, which is real low to moderate income areas. Um, so we basically um, enter into this agreement to give that uh, power over to them. So I would recommend that we uh, go ahead and approve this agreement for them tonight. Thank you. Comments from Council? I'll make a motion to approve the Mayor uh, executing Community Development Block Grant or Local Agreement with the County. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Montanero, second by Councilman Brimer. 
further discussion from council? Hearing none, open up for public comment on agenda item 11. Hearing none, back to council. Any co further comments? Hearing none, Lenore? Councilman Gaw? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanaro? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes, motion passes. Okay, moving on to agenda item 12. Take, discuss, take action on city manager's salary adjustment. I, uh, I collected uh, data from Mr. Um, Colin Benziger regarding um, salaries uh, and benefits of, of um, Florida city managers. And he prepared a document called the 2015 Florida City Manager Survey. And uh, when I saw the information that he had provided, I realized that given the exceptionally high performance of our city manager, we were not adequately compensating her. And um, there were a large number of cities throughout Florida that Mr. Benziger surveyed, but I felt it was appropriate to make comparisons with the three cities here in Gimbervard County um, that are comparable to Satellite Beach in uh, population. And those cities would be Cocoa Beach with a little over 11,000, and Satellite Beach has a little over 10,000. Cape Canaveral has almost 10,000, and Indian Harbor Beach has <clears throat> um, almost 8,800. Satellite Beach um, has, uh, there are a number of unique things about Satellite Beach that we do here um, that, um, make um, our city manager's job a little more challenging. Uh, and examples of that um, that I gave were our ongoing working relationship with Patrick. The fact that we have paid fire department with advanced life support, community paramedic program, and the communities for a lifetime <coughs> program. Um, we are also a regional recreational provider with our sports and recreation park. We also have done extensive environmental land preservation on both the river and the ocean. And uh, we have been a leader in stormwater projects to help restore the lagoon. In addition to the complexity of um, satellite beach operations, we have to look at the achievements which are directly attributable to her leadership. I gave a number of general categories and with specific, several specific examples under each of those categories. First of all, she streamlined operations, cut costs, and restored employee morale. I'm not going to read all of these, but there are 12 items under that category that are very significant in accomplishment. Um, and all of those were done by her. She restored sound budgeting and long range planning. And there are seven specific examples of that. Again, they were significant uh, accomplishments. She also provided solutions for longstanding infrastructure problems. Um, three specific examples under that, but they are huge projects, all of the infrastructure planning, the financing planning, and so forth. She also improved our city's interaction with residents. Uh, she's the one who started that Facebook page. We've been able to uh, reinstate the Beachcaster. We've implemented the community meetings and uh, involved residents in planning projects. She also revived our moribund redevelopment efforts. And I gave seven examples, specific examples, of how she accomplished that. Again, these were significant achievements, not small little things. She ended controversies that had been unfairly tarnishing our city uh, and established, um, reestablished our city's working relationship with Florida Today and other media outlets. She has also networked effectively to promote satellite beach interest. 
And um, I, I, frankly, I find it amazing that she has been involved with so many different organizations and serving in important positions on one, two, four, six, seven organizations. Uh, and in every one of these instances, she has been giving Satellite Beach a good name and putting us in a good light. And I don't think that there's any doubt that she's highly respected throughout this county and also in uh, contacts that she has made uh, even through state level. <clears throat> and even though uh, she has been uh, managing one of the most operationally uh, diverse cities in Brevard County and doing an exceptional job, uh, her salary is the lowest of the four comparable cities that I mentioned. Uh, we started her at 105000 which was at the bottom end of the salary range when we advertised to fill the city manager's position. She's had no uh, increase since uh, we hired her and no salary review. Um, this, I believe, this being the amount of her salary, I think it's a fairness, fairness issue and not a longevity issue. Uh, to those who would say, well, she's only been here a little over two years, I just say simply this, look at the results she's produced. They've been remarkable. Um, <clears throat> from day one, she sat down and she was the city manager. Frankly, I had expected her to need a learning period. She didn't. She was always able to answer questions, provide information, and do her job and know what to do from the first day she sat down. The uh, Cocoa Beach city manager, which I understand uh, has been replaced now, but uh, he has the same two years of experience as our city manager, and his salary is more than $131,000. And then also I think that this is uh, one of the most uh, telling examples of why she's not being fairly compensated now. Uh, when uh, we hired our acting city manager, we increased, and, and, and he had had no city manager experience, uh, we increased his salary to the point where his annual annualized salary was $112,860. And we are paying Ms. Barker 105. Additional data that I obtained from Mr. Benziger gave, um, showed what average salaries were according to different population groupings. And the two that, that are most applicable to us are the salary range of from five to 10,000 population, and there are 42 cities in Florida that, that um, fall into that category. And their average salary is $116,177. In, uh, there are a total of 46 cities in Florida with a population range of 10 to $20,000, and their average salary is um, almost $129,000. I felt that it was important to come up with a salary that was based on solid data and was not arbitrary. And so I felt that by, since we fall at the uh, lower end of that 10,000 to 20,000 range, I thought it was fair uh, to average the salaries in those two population groupings. And when I did that, uh, I came out to $122,488. And um, so, Grounding that, um, I am making a proposal and making a motion that we increase our city manager's salary to $122,500 a year, effective on the um, second anniversary of, of her hiring. Can we um, have a discussion before we second that? Is that Okay, in case you might want to add something to that. Sure. You don't mind, okay, I also called, got Coleman's number, and I spoke to him for approximately an hour on the phone. 
his figures were a little different, but close. What he said to me, he said, we got her for cheap to start. And, and I agree, I think she's done a fabulous job. I do not disagree with the number, 122.5, but here's what I would like to have on it. I would like that to be a four-year deal. No, I'm sorry, I apologize. I would like it to be a four-year deal and no cost of living because his numbers were slightly different. Here's what he told me. He thought it should be around somewhere around 116 to 118. So at 122.5, if you add it up through her six years and add up the total salary um, and divide it, you come out to 116 and 66, sorry, 6, we talked about. So I have no trouble with the 122, but what I learned, but um, I like the four years, and I would also like to have this where we need to come up with a way in our city of how we go about doing this in the future, um, in a lot of ways, whether it's compensation for pension and so forth. Because when you look at his data, it's all over the board in reality. You have people with two years experience making more than 27 years experience. So it doesn't seem to be a, a year of employment that gives you your salary. And there was a lot more things in it. So I'm, I'm, I like the 122.5. I don't have a problem with that. But I want it to be, a, again, a four-year. I don't understand what you mean by a, being a four-year. She will get 122.5 for four years each year. There's no coal on it. So at the end of the four years, she's getting 122.5 on it. We can negotiate her contract with us um, at another meeting on how if she wants something on pension or something of that nature. But from a salary, um, that's what I did. I did a 2% COLA. I did a 2% cost of living, excuse me. And I figured it out through the four years and so forth. And it's about $130,000 in year four that will cost us. So. That's what I, I, I would like to say personally. So, so what are you saying? Over four years, step it up from 160 no, she, to 120? No, no. She just get 122.5 for, for, for four years for the four years. And then we look at it in the four years. And you look at it in four years. Now, if she wants to come back with her contract, because we really need to, in the city, have some guidelines on how we did this. I thought, personally, we did when we used to do this for Mike. I went back and tried to look at some paperwork and so forth on how we did it. I think we did it at the anniversary of his contract with us on basis of his, um, when we did the evaluation. If he fell between a certain range, he got a certain percent. But we, that's not, we don't have that down. So my feeling is 122.5, I'm fine with it, but for four years, and then we can work on the contract. So why did you pick four years? Um, I just thought from a finance standpoint, Mr. Lou also said this. He said, be very careful about how you go about doing this because the average cost, the average salary is changes all the time. And if you always try to get there, you're never really there because as you do it, it keeps bumping up that salary. And I just think it's something that we can afford. And I have a, you know, when we get to our budget, one of the costs that is always going to be there is salary. And it's a major cost in it. And I understand Courtney, Courtney excuse me, wonderful job. And it's not really Courtney, it's the city manager's position. She doesn't work for the city, really. Inevitably, she works for us. So that's why I, I came to that. I just can I, thought it was a way to reward her for it, but also keep the cost to the city within check on salaries, even though she's not a city truly employee. It's still salary to the city. Okay, so you're, you're basically proposing Lorraine's motion of 122.5, held at four years, retroactive to her last appraisal. Absolutely. And that's, the, that's the, how the motion would have to be amended if that's, that's what, what you would do. Yeah. This is my idea on it. And, Courtney, I think you've done just an incredible job. I know I've 
told you that. And your references, yeah. your references is Colin is his. Yeah, I did. I called him. I called Lenore. Lenore sent me his phone number. That's a good reference. And I did, I guess, the same thing you did. Talk to him because to me it was important. She's a fabulous lady. She did a great job for us. I want to be fair to her, but I also, in the position, want to be fair to the city from an ex expense standpoint. And I also want to make sure, though, that this doesn't, after this meeting, get dropped from the standpoint of coming up with a procedure, policy and a procedure, on how we do this. How we do it in the future? Yeah. Okay. I just I, think we need to do it. Can I just ask one thing? You, you mentioned pension. You don't have a pension. She has retirement. So we just so that I don't really the audience doesn't get the impression that she has a pension. She right. does not have any pension. And, and that's why part of my it comment was yeah. part of my comment was on this because if you look at the information from Colin, who did our search for us, he was our consultant. Every city you look at is something different. I mean it goes all over the place. And um, so this is what I thought was personally fair to both the city. And Courtney, she might feel different, but that's what I think is is fair for the. So term. if you'll if you'll amend your motion, Lorraine, I'll second it. What if uh, four years seems like a long time to me? What if we said three years? I, I would be okay with I that. I would be okay with that. You'd be okay with yes, that. Yes, Okay, then my motion. On that. My motion is to increase um, the city manager's annual salary to $122,500 um, effective April 15, her, um, her second employment anniversary uh, with Satellite Beach, and that amount to be constant for three years. I have a motion by council. I'll second. I'll second by council. <laughs> for the discussion. I, I would just like to add a couple of comments. I mean, Again, there's no doubt on our accomplishments. I think we can all agree with that. I think on the bad side of that is you've done so much in such a short amount of time, and I think this is where the time period comes into place is you certainly would hate to have to do this two, three years from now and have to have that four pages of accomplishments, you know, to try to justify, let's say, a, a more another fair upgrade pay raise. I mean, that's why I agree with the mayor saying we need to come up with a, a more standard thing so that you don't have to go through all this just to try to, to justify that. And I agree, I think, for the three-year portion, that was a good thing, um, although you're right, we know it's kind of hard to compare with city employees, but when you think of what we've given city employees and we want to maintain city morale and we want to make sure you know, the message we're trying to send to everybody, I think, I agree with Councilman Wright, is, is fairness. We're trying to say what is fair and what is right. So I, I do support that. I like the idea. I think that over the time period, it's probably a good place to be right now until we can come up with a long-term pay plan. I mean, everybody, everybody should have something. What, were, what are we going to do next time around? So we don't have to go through this every time we do that. And Mr. Mayor, you may want to get with or get some recommendations from Colin how to move forward on this, just to save a lot of headache on how we do this. Um, let uh, me just open I, I, up for public comment, then I'll bring it back to okay. Is that okay? This time for agenda item 12, public comment is open. John? <clears throat> Joanne Regan, Satellite Beach, Satellite Beach resident. The facts supporting a very fair salary increase for our city manager are well documented by Lorraine's memo, but I want to add my support. I have observed Courtney since her interview days, and she has consistently exceeded all of my expectations for all of the reasons listed in the memo, but also because of her inclusive attitude. I attended most of the A1A improvement meetings and witnessed Courtney's interaction with business owners and residents. She always shows that we are her priority. She listens, she acts, and people recognize that they are being heard. Also, it's my opinion that when most people are extremely busy, they tend to avoid new issues or they refer you to other people. Courtney keeps her priorities in line, but she is always open to people's questions, ideas, and involvement if it will serve the city. Finally, we are all aware of the salary discrepancies between men and women. Let's not be guilty of that in Satellite Beach. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment portion is still open.
a fine citizen. Um, first of all, I would support the previous uh, citizen's comments 100%. Second, I support Councilwoman Gott's comments. Uh, the city manager came to us with a multitude of skills, with a multitude of previous positions that she held. She came to us, she hit the ground running. She, from day one, was a city manager. No OJT, no on the job training. She was a city manager. And basically I have watched her almost every, <coughs> excuse me, almost every council meeting since she's been here. And even you all attest that she has done an extraordinary job. I think her pay raise is warranted. I don't agree with the three years. I think that's a long time to stay at the same salary as wife. From what I understand, that's the, what is, what's going to happen with no cost of living increase. Uh, I think I've heard a lot of things about fairness. What is fair? What is fair? This salary is fair. This salary. I don't care about fairness. Life is not fair. I know that from 79 years of living. What I want is justice, justification. She has the justification. She has done an extraordinary job. She has the justification to deserve this pay raise and more. I disagree with the three year term for the simple reason that I wouldn't want to be stuck in the same salary for three years with no cost of living expenses. I think city council need to get together, come up with a viable plan when a city manager or whoever, any department head, does an outstanding, extraordinary job that, is, that justifies an increase in his salary. Like I said, fairness is okay. It's okay, but life is not fair. What I want is justice. Justice for the job she has done, justice for the job she's going to do. Thank you. Public comments still open. John Fergus, 135 Maple. Uh, Courtney got thrown into the briar patch. Uh, this place was kind of ragged around the ears when she came in. And uh, uh, she showed her metal, it's kind of like you're taking somebody out of basic and dump them on the beach at Normandy. Uh, you know, it's, it's, there wasn't a, a ramp up of any sort, it was, you're there. Uh, she took on quite a few opponents, including the clerk of courts, and uh, slayed a few dragons. So uh, I think it would be a good idea to try to keep this individual in the position uh, for a significant period of time, and so this would appear to be warranted. Thank you. Thank you. Public comments still open. You're none back to council. I would like to ask uh, Courtney: Is it, is this is my motion acceptable to you? Uh, the only thing that the only thing that I would like to say is I, I think you know. We've got this three-year window we're looking at, but I would like us, I would like us to look at whatever we're going to do as far as policies and procedures and try to put them in place as soon as we can. Um, I don't know what other, you know, when you were talking, Frank, about other negotiating things that we would be looking at, but I would think that if, if those are things that we need to look at as part of the policies and procedures, that we include whatever those are also. The, the reason I said that is I spent a lot of time on the phone with Colin, and if you look at his sheet, it's pretty hard after salary because of the diversity of the different pensions and everything. Some of the salary, some of the contracts are forever. You know, you look at that thing, some of them are two years, some of them are ten years. It, it's all over the board. And no, I don't want this to go on 
you know, for three years and then we come up. I want to do it, get it in our policies and procedures so we have something that's fair, and, and I don't mean this in any bad way, not just to Courtney, but fair to how we do this for the city. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I'd like to have down because it's just like when we do these ordinances here on zoning. It's not for a particular <laughs> piece of property. So, you know, hopefully Courtney's with us for a very long time, and most of our city managers have been 27 years with Mike, and God hope Courtney, please break that record. Oh, I just want to say this one thing. Chief, all those people who got up and spoke did not mean to hurt your feelings, so... Okay. <laughs> he was over there just, just. He was, yeah, he was upset. So. And you were worth every penny we paid. <laughs> yes, he is. You know, I just the, the last thing I want to say is that this item came up in June at the first meeting in June, and the mayor wasn't here, and um, you know, I supported the number right from the beginning, but I think that. This played out the way it needed to play out. I think the document that you put together, the information that you put together, um, gives the public a real good grasp of how great a job Courtney has done for our city. And I'm glad that we waited for the mayor to be here. We have a full council, and I'm hoping that tonight we have a unanimous vote. Thank you. I, I would just like to echo that. I, I think, again, that the documentation definitely helps. I, I mean, it was nice. I mean, obviously you did the research, but you were the only one that, that had the research. Um, so for the rest of us, we didn't know where the number was just pulled out of the air or where it, where it came from. But I agree that when you got to look at it, and I actually got to read it and study it, and as most of us did, kind of check the numbers and check the facts and, and look over everything, I, I think it was a very compelling story. Um, and, and, and I think, you know, when we make any decisions out here, we should be making them on the best available information that we have at the time, and we should not make arbitrary decisions. And I, I think, you know, thank you very much for giving us all that information. I, I like to make my decisions based on that information, and I think it was very, very helpful. Good. Okay, so we got a motion. We have it. Yep. Laura? Okay. Who's going to make the second, though? I did. You did? Okay. <clears throat> Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Councilman Gott? Yes. Mayor Catino? Absolutely, yes. Great job. Courtney, thank you very much for all your hard work. Sorry to be the bug. But... Okay. Now you can afford to take us all to dinner. Yeah, we're <laughs> Not that we're oh, keeping score. Spent all that <laughs> Not that we're keeping score, but now that you've set the bar, I'll keep track of the yeah. future endeavors. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much, Lorraine. Thank you. Um, moving on to agenda 13, uh, City Council proposed uh, agenda items. If you'd please take a look at them. If there's anything else you would like to add to it. Um, yeah, please. I, um, I talked to Courtney, and I don't know whether it's going to come up on this agenda or one of the meetings in, in August. But, um, you know, I'd like to invite uh, our representative, Rich Workman, to come and address you. I would like to invite our, our representative, um, Rich Workman, to come to one of our meetings. You know, once again, with the legislative session starting um, early this year, they're going to be going back to Tallahassee in September. So, you know, before, in years past, we always had the option of trying to get them in here, you know, in September or October. That's, that's not going to play out this year. So I'm, I'm going to, I would like Council's concurrence that I was going to call Rich and ask him if he would come and just address, you know, the citizens that we have in the audience and kind of tell him, you know, ask him if he would go over, you know, what happened and what were important to him in the last session and what he's anticipating, you know, for us in the next session. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out. I, I like that. All right. Sounds great. Okay. And again, any other additions to it, please get with Courtney or Lamar. Okay. Okay. Moving on to adoption of minutes for May 20th, 2015, June 17th workshop. 
and the June 17th regular. I'll make a motion to approve both of those minutes as submitted. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Montanaro, second by Councilman Osmer. Actually, there's three of them. Three. Three, right. The 20th, the 17th, and the 17th. The 20th, the 17th, and the 17th. Right. I agree. Okay, I agree. Lenore? Yep. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Councilman McGaugh? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanaro? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes, motion passes. Um, item 15 is no longer on the appointment to Green Committee. That was on the supplement. So is there any further business before council? Yeah. Um, on the calendar, uh, the um, TPO meeting meets the second Thursday of every month, and we reset the meeting date for the South Beaches Coalition to be that Monday before that second Thursday. So on our July calendar, the South Beaches Coalition meeting will be on J Monday, July the 6th. Mm -hmm. and can I ask one thing also? Can, um, can we get emailed the green meeting dates so we can incorporate them into our calendar? I don't think they're on those yes. calendars. Yeah, but that, would, that took place after. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We can, as long as you just email. And it's already been incorporated for the mm -hmm. next packet, but okay. we can email the Yeah, we can email the it after. Yeah. Right. Might be good to email it to the committee members, too. Yeah. Um, the meetings are uh, July 2nd, July 9th, July 14th, and July 30th at this time. Okay. Say it again. July 2nd, which is tomorrow. All, all meetings begin at 7 p.m. July 9th, July 14th, and July 30th. For this month. Okay. Any further business? Hearing none, thank you everyone for coming. It is adjourned.